Hello children, this is Mrs. Butcher. This video is about graphing square root functions. All right, now the parent function for the square root function is just f of x equals the square root of x. Please make a note, this is not plus or minus. So let's plot a graph of this parent function. All right, we all know the square root of zero is zero. The square root of one is one. Square root of 2 is ugly. Square root of 3 is ugly, but the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to skip up to that. And the square root of 5 is ugly, and 6 is ugly, all the way up to 9. So if you have room on your grid, go ahead and go up to 9, 3. Um, but I want you to plot a minimum of 3 points for me. So note we actually have a very specific starting point here, and that's because... We can't take the square root of negative 1. It doesn't exist, or anything below 0. Can't take the square root of any of that stuff. So our domain for this function starts at 0 and touches it, and then goes on infinitely to the right. Our range for this function also starts at 0, y equals 0, and touches it, and goes infinitely up. Okay, so now we're going to talk about transforming it. Um, so here's what transformations we have, the same transformations we've been working on all year, but we'll write them down anyway just in case we forgot. A negative in front of the entire thing would reflect that graph over the x-axis. If a is greater than 1, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of a. If a is less than 1, it is a vertical compression by 1 over a, the reciprocal of a. If there's a negative inside of the parentheses, a negative b value, it reflects the graph over the y-axis. If b is greater than 1, remember if b is greater than 1, we have a horizontal compression by 1 over b, by the reciprocal of b. And if b is less than 1, we have a horizontal stretch um, by, I put by b, but it's really 1 over b because if I had a 1 half, I would stretch by 2. If I had a one-third, I would stretch by three. Okay, the C value is your horizontal shift. Um, a lot of times they'll use H instead. And remember, minus H goes to the right and plus H goes to the left. And the plus D, and sometimes they use plus K, but it, that represents your vertical shift, and it is plus is up and minus is down. Okay, so let's do some examples. Let's take f of x equals 3 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. Let's describe the translations, let's uh, graph it, and let's give the domain and range. So the first thing we want to look at is this 3 right here. That's the a value. It's greater than 1, so it's a vertical stretch by 3. Then we're going to look at this minus 1 right here, and that's our C or our H, so that means we're going to shift it to the right one. And this plus 2 is our D or our K. That's our after value. That's shifting the whole thing up to. So for the graph, one thing you can do is just say, well, I know that my normally my parent function starts at 0, 0. So if I'm shifting it right 1 and up 2, then my uh, starting point is going to be 1, 2. I've gone right 1 and up 2. If you aren't sure, plug in a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 times 3 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. Yes, okay, 1, 2 is a point. And I can't go less than 1 because um, one thing you can do is take what's under the square root sign and say, well, that can never be less than 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to 1. 1 is the lowest value we can have, so we're not even going to pick anything less than 1. All right, um, when x is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. So on our parent function, we went over 1 and up 1, but now we're going over 1 and up 1, 2, 3, because we've stretched it by a factor of 3. All right, if I plug in a 3, I'm going to be taking the square root of 2, that's ugly. If I plug in a 4, I'm going to be taking the square root of 3, that's ugly. If I plug in a 5, then 5 minus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, 
2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. So my point is going to be at 5, 8. Right here, here's 8. So on the parent function, we had gone over 3 and up 1. Now we're going over 3 and up 1, 2, 3, because we're stretched by 3. So there's my three points minimum. And remember, it starts here. There's nothing beyond this point. And then it has a curve that extends to the right in this one. So if we're going to write the domain in range, the domain starts at 1 and it touches it and then it goes infinitely to the right. And for the range, we start at 2 on the y's and touch it and go infinitely up. All right, here's another example. This is our last example. f of x equals negative square root of 1 half parenthesis x plus 1 and then plus 5. Um, so let's do the same thing. Let's describe our translations. We've got a negative out in front. So a negative out in front means we're going to have a what? We're going to reflect it over the x-axis. All right, and then we have this 1 half in here. That's your b. And 1 half is less than 1, so it's going to be a horizontal stretch by the reciprocal of this, which is 2. We have a plus 1, and note it is in parentheses. If it wasn't in parentheses, you'd have to make sure you factored this thing out first before you figured out what this was. Remember that. It has to be in parentheses. So it already is. We know we're going to the left one unit. And finally, we have the plus 5, which we know means we're going to shift it up 5. And here, I'm going to remind you again, because I know that I said it a million times and I still see it. Make sure that you say reflect over the x-axis, because this negative reflects it over the x-axis. If you just said reflect, I don't know if you mean x-axis or y-axis, because remember, a negative inside would reflect it over the y-axis, and that's different. So make sure you tell me what it's reflecting over. Okay, so let's plot this one on a graph. Um, we know that normally we start at 0, 0. When you reflect over the x-axis, that doesn't go anywhere. When you stretch it horizontally, that doesn't go anywhere. But then we have to shift it left 1 and up 5. So this is our starting point, right? When we reflect it over the axis, x-axis, we know instead of going upward, it's now going to go downward. Um, if we plugged in a 0 right here, we'd have 0 plus 1 and then we would have is 1. Half of that is 1 half, and then we're trying to take the square root of 1 half. That's nasty, so let's keep on moving to 1. If I plug a 1 in, 1 plus 1 is 2, half of 2 is 1. I can take the square root of 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. I negate that. I get negative 1 plus 5 is 4. There. So what happened is my horizontal stretch by 2, usually I would have gone over 1 and up 1. Reflecting it would have taken me over 1 and down 1, but now I have to go over 2 and down 1 because I've stretched it. All right, the next pretty number that's going to work is going to be 7 because 7 plus 1 is 8 and half of 8 is 4. So here's 7. Like I said, 7 plus 1 is 8, half of 8 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. Negate that, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So the next point is there. You see how this is stretched out horizontally. So there's our function. There's our minimum of three points. We have a domain. Starts x on the x of negative 1, goes to infinity. And the range, don't be tripped up by this, the range starts at negative infinity. It doesn't level off. There's no asymptote. It's always going to be going down further and further and further. So our range starts at negative infinity, and it ends at 7. I mean 5. Whew. Ends at 5 and touches 5. So that's it. That's all you have for graphing square root functions with translations, which you already knew anyway. Have a good one. Bye.